live from the Mandalay Bay Convention Center in Las Vegas. It's the Cube covering VMworld 2016. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem sponsors. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and Stu Miniman. Hello everyone, welcome back to day two of wall-to-wall -wall coverage here at VMworld Live in Las Vegas. This is SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube. It's our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from noise. I'm John Furrier, my co-host Stu Miniman. We're on the set one of two sets here in the broadcast center and the hang space at the Mandalay Bay Convention Center for VMworld. Stu, day two, we're kicking off of three days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I mean, we got so many interviews going on. I don't know which set. We got two sets. We have the director's set with the director's chairs and also here the, with the anchor desk. Um, just amazing amount of interviews yesterday. I kind of felt like I ran a marathon last night and I still crashed. I'm like, got to get up and do it again today. Yeah, come on, John. You know, the, the, the Cube, it's, it's not a marathon anymore. It's the Iron Man. It's, uh, you know, three days, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're biking, we're swimming, we're running, uh, you know, going through this. Uh, there's so many interviews. I, I know you and Dave so many times. It's like, hey, what do you think of, you know, Bill that you interviewed? And they're like, who's Bill? Oh, you interviewed him three hours ago. I can't remember. It's like, you know, the old structure. <laughs> you don't even know what you had for breakfast. I mean, that's the, the thing that the pace of the interviews is fun. I got to say, I love doing the Cubes, Stu. You're awesome. You had a great day yesterday. I just feel full of data. I mean, we're like in an ingestion system. We ingest all the content, then we go to the events after and hear the hallway conversations. And I think, to me, that's the best part is we get to sit down, have great conversations, share that with the, with the audience out there and get a live perspective, but then go out and talk to the other analysts, the other press guys, the, uh, the executives at VMware and the partners, and then we get the scuttlebutt in the hallways. Oh, yeah, John, nothing like, you know, you're having a couple of drinks, listen to some music, and, you know, hearing all the dirt of what's going on in the industry, what's happened to the show, what do they like, what don't they like, and then we're back into it with a big keynote this morning and another full day uh, of uh, all the coverage that we have to do. Let's break down what ha what's happening day two here, obviously the keynote, Sanjay Poonan on stage, really, again, we mentioned it last yesterday, it was Salesforce on stage. Um, Sanjay Poonin, basically the number two guy now at VMware. He's right there growing his business, doing really, really well. Uh, really talking about the end user computing. And he made a joke yesterday to end, end, end user computing. So, Stu, what's your take on that? Because now you're looking at a standardization, a unification. So if you have a unification of the end user side and you got containers and you got cloud native, it's almost all snapping together. Your thoughts? Yeah, John, so I mean, we've been talking to Sanjay about this back when he was SAP, at SAP. It's that wave of mobility and digitization. It's not about like, you know, oh, you know, desktop virtualization. It's, yeah, there's reasons I might want to do VDI, but for years here in the VMware community, it was kind of, that was it. Uh, Sanjay's really broadened that. They had the AirWatch acquisition. Uh, they've really moved that ball forward. It said they had Salesforce out there, you know, good software partnership. Uh, and, you know, I, I hear good progress as to what VMware's doing, you know, real revenue, real growth, uh, so it's pretty exciting. You know, it's, it's a nice line of sight, too, on the solution. It's pretty obvious. You almost, you almost, it's almost laughable when you think about it. People have their mobile phones. They want to log in. They want to access the apps. They don't want to have different methods of getting in, and they got to build security around. So to me, I was interested in the security aspect of it, Stu, because now you're talking about, okay, you can unify stuff, great, eliminate those point solutions, but the security is a tough nut to crack. What's your thoughts on their approach there? What's your, what's your thinking about the NSX component of that? Yeah, so, you know, we really uh, highlighted it last year, you know, the, the tip of the spear for NSX has been security. Uh, VMware's digging into a lot. We've got a couple interviews we're going to be doing today and tomorrow uh, to look at that, but NSX has gone beyond it. I, I got to talk to uh, a customer uh, that was using uh, VMware NSX uh, to help scaling of their storage environment, and it actually wasn't VMware Visa, and this one happened to be a Dell Nutanix uh, customer, and even he was a little bit worried about doing doing Dell plus Nutanix, got a personal call from Michael Dell, uh, which, you know, John, we, we know how that can happen. Michael called him up and said, hey, what can I do from you, for you? How can I assure you that you should buy from Dell? And that Nutanix solution from us is a good one. Um, it really helps scale their yeah. environment uh, because that networking and storage needs to go hand in hand uh, as we build out these environments. Yeah, and the NSX, obviously, center stage is a key, multiple keynote sessions, so that was key. The other thing that I liked in the keynotes this morning was the vSAN. Stu, this is close to your heart because I think <laughs> you, I think you were the one that originally did the original premise work around vSAN in the early days, and kind of people were scratching their head, kind of throwing some uh, you know rocks at you, saying, "Stu, what are you thinking?" But turns out vSAN is looking good, big yeah. time. So, so first of all, right, we called it server SAN, and we were like, "It's the combination of what's happening in the hyperscale, uh, what's happening with software-defined storage, how Flash is changing everybody." And yeah, we, we took a lot of stones uh, getting thrown at us, and we showed growth rates in our 10-year forecast yeah. that everybody's like, "You guys are crazy." Well, yeah. we put out our third third year uh, of the report, and people look at where we were in 2015, and you know, it's 
over five companies with over $100 million worth of revenue. VMware is now number two in the space, uh, you know, and we are seeing the growth. People are understanding, like VMware itself, uh, you know, the, this whole hyper-converged infrastructure has expanded to a lot more use cases, uh, and really, a, you know, most virtual environments can live on, on that kind of infrastructure. So, uh, we've had a bunch of interviews. We're digging in not only with VMware, but all of the uh, ecosystem partners and a number of customers that are using it. Uh, so, it is exciting growth. Uh, it's something is near and dear to my heart having watched kind of converge and now hyper-converge growing. That trend of simplification is what we need in IT. Yeah. More homogeneity and more uh, you know, simplicity to be able to get people out of that drudgery of the you know, undifferentiated heavy lifting like we see in the cloud. And obviously vSAN with Kit Colbert talking about a lot of the, you know, the, the integrated storage I.O. control component. Also the issue that's coming up, I'm looking at Twitter, some of the Twitter feeds here, uh, um, next vSAN version bringing more advanced data security features opens up a lot of doors, and that was by uh, Brandon uh, Wardlaw. So, so, so this is important. Data is going to be the value proposition and open data. How does this fit into the cross-cloud architecture? Yeah, so, you know, storage is, uh, you know, we, we've called it off, and it's been that boat anchor that's held IT down for so long. So we need to free storage uh, to, you know, services, um, and therefore, if it's more software-driven, more distributed, uh, you know, that, that's going to help people to be able to build new architectures, leverage it as we build modern applications, need to take care of advantage of that. That doesn't mean we change the laws of physics, John. Moving data is still very difficult. Uh, you know, David Floyer, if you talk to him about, you know, you know cross-cloud, you know, B-motions, everything, it's like, well, is that just the application and the compute and the resources? Are we spinning up and spinning down, you know, VMs or containers, or are we actually moving data? Because then we've got kind of speeds and feeds issues we need to discuss. Uh, and storage is still hard, you know. We talk about layers of abstraction, that doesn't mean that it gets rid of the challenges we have. As a networking guy, you know, one of my favorite lines is there's no such thing as eliminating a bottleneck, you've just moved it somewhere else. So, you know, big challenges here, and, but, you know, we are making progress. So let's do day two keynotes, basically a lot of meat on the bone as we say. Day one was pretty much the big cross-cloud architecture. You know, Pat kind of doing his thing, uh, laying it out. Some, some were saying it was a really boring keynote, but he really wanted to lay down essentially that premise. Today there was a very much in substance. You Sanjay laid down a lot of good stuff there. Obviously Salesforce on stage for the first time at VMworld. VMware and Salesforce on stage. Yeah. Yesterday IBM, Salesforce. This is a rebirth of their ecosystem. So I got to ask you, because you and I were talking about this last night about, you know, what will the future of cloud architecture look like vis-a-vis -vis the competition? If there's multi-cloud uh, architectures being in play for customers, what's Microsoft going to do? Um, some are saying they're going to come out with a proprietary stack to lock in customers. Yeah. So, Stu, that's not going to work for VMware. So, really interesting point, John, because if you ask me, who is more open today, Microsoft or VMware? I'm saying Microsoft. Microsoft's really embraced open source. They've open sourced a lot of their applications. Their cloud allows me to plug in Linux here. That being said, you know, Kit Colbert was on stage today, did a real nice job, update for uh, VMware integrated container, the VIC, uh, and uh, Photon, both pre-revenue products. Um, and John, I, I want to dig into this a little bit because you know, when we look at this community, you were at DockerCon, yes. you know, I, I've been there before, th this community, it's complicated and people want choice. So it was great that VMware said, hey, we've got you know, a container registry called Harbor and it's up on GitHub and it's open source and you can choose Docker containers if you want, but building that whole package, feedback I got from the community is you can't shrink wrap that. There's no way to be able to take that whole experience. I need to be able to really take the different pieces, yeah. code on it myself. Uh, VMware's got 500,000 customers and most of those people are operators. They're admins, they don't speak as well to the developers, it's just not their audience. Even when their first thing they talk about enterprise container infrastructure, to me, that says operator, that says you know trusted, and that's what VMware knows to do, but it reminds me of the early days of Amazon reInvent, who talked only to the developers and not yeah. to enterprise. VMware's got the opposite problem. And when specifically, you mean the operators? Yeah. Not, yeah, yeah. And, and what does Microsoft have it there? So, so Microsoft does have, does have mixed, John. I mean, you, you, you know better than me some of the developers <laughs> that, that are working in the Microsoft space. It's not for everyone, and sure, Microsoft has their challenges there. Um, but, you know, does Microsoft, Microsoft have a good play? Of course. They're yeah, doing well, Microsoft, phenomenal. They got their operators in the data center. Obviously, they have database, they have software, they have server software. So all that stuff's going on in Microsoft. But to me, that I'm looking at is, Stu, you mentioned open source and, and well, who's more open. 
being open and using open source are two different things. Yes. I mean, so the lock-in spec is not so much proprietary, it's a lock-in spec of stickiness. So to me, what I'm looking at, Microsoft in particular, and why I'm scratching my head thinking they might be a more of a lock-in for customers, is that they're using open source very aggressively, but creating a sticky stack where it's really gonna not so much be open per se. Yeah, absolutely. If, if you don't think you're getting locked, you know, you're going to get locked in no matter what you do. It's just how much and how sticky it is. That's a great point, John. Uh, you know, VMware is real sticky, even when there are alternatives uh, to be able to go to other hypervisors. Uh, but you know, cloud, we I think is still you know a big threat. I'm looking forward to talking to Pat today uh, about kind of the latest swing that they're taking at kind of that cloud management and work orchestration suite, uh, because VMware has been beaten on this for a few years, um, but I'm not sure if VMware has the right to be the, the choice when customers say, I'm doing Azure, I'm doing AWS, and I'm doing VMware. Is, is, is VMware going to be in the center of that you know, m and stack? So what are you going to ask Pat Gelsinger? What's, the main, what's your main question for? Let's go, let's go talk about Pat Gelsinger. <laughs> Three o'clock, Pat Gelsinger will be on theCUBE again for his annual sit down with us, which he loves to come on theCUBE, which we love having him. He's very candid, he's very open. Uh, you know, I'm predicting he'll be banging on the on the cross cloud architecture. Uh, I'm going to ask him a little bit more about the foundation component of that. But other than that, I mean, what do you expect to hear from Pat? Yeah, well, John, it's it's the, you know what we look at for any company of the size of VMware is how are they continue to grow what they've had and how are they going to really drive forward. You know, in many ways, we know you you can't just go to everybody that's you know you know been running VMware for the longest time and say okay, change everything, you know, retrain all your people and do something a new way. You know, how are you managing that transition? How are you going forward? Uh, how is VMware going to you know? you know, work on that next generation of applications. Uh, you know, Pivotal came out of, mostly out of VMware, John, and they're driving some of that application modernization. When I think back to the early days when I worked with, with VMware, uh, what they enabled was customers to take their old applications on old hardware and hold onto them even longer. So, you know, how does VMware go from a, a company that helped customers hold on to the past as long as possible to a company that can drive uh, the, the new innovation and that digital transfer that Pat opened up the show with. So, uh, you know, Pat's been working at this for four years and even longer uh, at his previous companies. Uh, you know, he's always got, you know, some well thought out ideas on it and definitely looking forward to digging into him, into it with him and, and lots of our guests. So, Stu, you get a lot of popular questions coming on Twitter here. Stu, what has Sanjay Poonin brought to VMware? That's a question to you from the Twitter sphere. Yeah, so, so Sanjay Poonin is, you know, great leadership. He's been here a number of years. Uh, we've, there's been so much press about some of the key people uh, that are gone. You know, Carl's not here this year. You know, I think Sanjay's stepping into the shoes here. Uh, Kit Colbert got some real good kudos uh, going on the stage. You know, Yen Bing, you know, rock star going up talking about vSAN, uh, you know, the, so, you know, We've been highlighting, you know, some of these acquisitions and product lines that VMware's put out um, are being successful and moving VMware beyond just the based hypervisor, uh, which, uh, you know, itself uh, is, you know, in many ways at parity with a lot of solutions out there. Um, another, another one, Stu, is uh, what trends should the IT community focus on? Wow. So, uh, you know, we, as we always want, John, you know, it's IT is how are you providing you know, more value back to your business. How are you being more responsive? How are you becoming more agile? Uh, it was great to see a couple of the customers on stage. Nike was there. Uh, we know Nike's going through a big digital transformation. I've seen them on a number of these shows that are developer friendly. They were in the cloud native section. You know, I, I picked up at one of the cloud shows, you know, a Nike, uh, you know, coat is king shirt because, uh, <laughs> the, you know, we, we've said many times the, these big companies that are uh, at many of these shows, that's what they need. They need that, you know, that person that's, that's coding, that's developing, that's moving business forward. Um, so what we've always said for IT for many years now is you know, if you're doing the same thing that you were a couple of years ago, you probably need to reevaluate it. You know, it's not just the automation, uh, it's about understanding where you're adding value to the business and what you can get rid of yourself. It's a core fundamental of what we believe at Wikibon is that you need to be able to shift things to platforms and to products. Um, and VMware has a number of solutions as well as you know, the cloud and you know, modern applications out there. You know, I got to say, today I'm, in, I'm impressed so far this morning, Yen being up sta on stage talking about the vSAN. I think the vSAN is a killer uh, opportunity for VMware. I think they got lightning in a bottle with that, Stu, because that's at the center of a lot of cool things going on. It's right in their wheelhouse with virtualization 
And what they can do with that, with the data, is really critical, because it's now you're talking about storage and networking, as you pointed out, but as it moves up the stack to the cloud-native architecture, you're going to see that potentially be a real engine of growth, innovation opportunities as well for VMware, be, because the data will be the lock-in spec. In my opinion, if I'm a customer and I'm looking at Microsoft, VMware, Amazon, I'm going to say to myself, I need to have my data move around. I do not want my data locked in. And what I'm looking at, and this is why I'm real skeptical of Microsoft right now, because they are the last shoe to drop. If they try to do a, a land grab on the data and make it sticky, then that's not going to bode well for VMware. Yeah. So the, this whole premise of moving multiple clouds is not going to fly. Yeah, and, and I mean, John, you know, when you talk about those integrated components in there, uh, it, it, you know, Azure Stack is not exactly you know apples to apples to what VMware is doing with the Cloud Foundation. But you look underneath it and you say VMware v, uh, vSAN is something that they've been beaten on for a few years. It's a much mature product. Uh, storage spaces inside of Microsoft. Uh, there, there's quite a bit of uh, you know I'd say warts inside there. It, it's not necessarily what everybody needs. Uh, there's all of these kind of underlying software pieces. Red Hat. It's got Ceph. You know, Ceph's very good in a lot of environments, but you know, certain performance scalability it runs into some limitations, you know, so where's the boundaries as to what can be built yep. in the software and what are they building with the partner ecosystem. Uh, there, there's definitely uh, lots of room for maturity and, you know, we're, we're going to be tracking this down. Uh, you know, what Pat say, the next five years is when we're going to see some of the big moves. Uh, so, you yeah, know, we're, we're at But five years, too, is a lifetime. I mean, just yeah. go back seven years, Paul Moritz was leading the charge at VMware. He laid out the architecture, which, you know, as we said yesterday, he was right. What he laid out was absolutely where the industry actually is today, except it's not VMware. <laughs> The VMware didn't end up getting those pieces of the stack. They had to spin out Pivotal, and they had that whole you know, spring source and all that stuff in, into the Pivotal operation. And then VMware kind of had to stay on the infrastructure side and kind of create that hardened top and try to do that. That was a fail. So now they're retooling, if you will, and settling in on their sweet spot. Um, so the question is, Will that work in a multi-cloud world? This is the question. Yeah, and and John, you know, what about the revenue? We, you know, we only have one VC on the program, unfortunately, this year. There's a few trickling around, um, but. Today, all of the cloud native and container stuff that VMware has, it's pre-revenue. We don't even have pricing on it yet. And the, somebody was like, oh, there's discussions happening on that? I said, well, there's discussions happening all over. I'm sure DockerCon, you know, making money is like one of the big topics because we're not sure yet. It's all of these open source components, very distributed in, uh, you know, architectures with lots of different components. And if a lot of them are open source, the big companies are taking them, they're building on it. How do we actually capture value and, and shift what's happening? Stu, day, day two, we got a lot of coverage. We're we're going to be full, again, a meal of content here on theCUBE. We're ingesting all the data. We're interviewing everybody. Uh, great to see you. Good day two kickoff. A lot more coverage here coming from live from Las Vegas, the Mandalay Bay. We're in the hang space at VMworld 2016. It's theCUBE. We'll be right back with more after this short break. <laughs>